Romans chapter 5 and the Passion Translation, and they're ready to open, but I, oh, don't, yeah. we're, I doubt we're going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll, we'll be, I don't think we'll get there. I think, I think that God wants to say something different. All right. I think that there's more about the wealth transfer. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it'll take long, but yeah, I know it's already happening. So For sure. Yeah, welcome, friends. Uh, just going to take a few minutes praying, preparing a little bit. Today is a very special time with an amazing and amazing man of God. So, cross pointers, come back in. Friends, come back, share with some friends. We're going to have a tremendous time. Uh, 45 minutes, just tremendous from 7 to 7.45. So, yes, yeah, invite somebody to come in. Praise the Lord. Father, we we just so excited in this season. Of course, we have compassion on those suffering, nations that have been locked down, and people are going through so much, but yet within our spirit, there is a thrill. Because we know you are doing something. You never play catch up. You never play catch up. So nothing takes you by surprise. And therefore, we find our security in that, that you are still God, mm -hmm. sitting on the throne. We celebrate you for your goodness and your mercy that you extended unto us so richly mm -hmm. through Jesus Christ and daily renewed. Father, thank you for the covering. Thank you for the clouds. Thank mm -hmm. you for the fire. Thank mm -hmm. you for your sustaining power. Thank you for mm -hmm. such a great salvation. We just bless everyone who is coming on the line, who is joining us, that you might have a rhema word for them tonight that will revolutionize their life, set them back on a new track. Father, opening their eyes to see you more clearly than they have never seen you before. Give them a fresh vision of Jesus Christ and his finished and final work on the cross. Mm -hmm. We are not orphans. We are not hanging around in the wilderness Father, you are our daddy. You are our father in heaven. We thank you for the salvation that you have cut through the blood of Jesus Christ, reconciling mankind to yourself. We are so hopeful because of you. We pray for our government. Hallelujah. Yes. We bless all the men and women who are on the front line. Yes, that God may extend his hand to sustain and protect them. The blood of Jesus that speaks of better things than the blood of Abel. That blood begin to remember their families, their children, their welfare, their wellness in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Just keep coming. Invite somebody to come in. We're going to start at 7 o'clock. Uh, you will not want to miss this time because God has brought us a man who has a voice, who is rich in the spirit of God, wise, a man on the word and the man of the Numa. So, a seasoned man of God. So I invite somebody. We're going to have our Bible study and we're going to have a great time. Yeah, just let's keep praying together as we're waiting a little bit. Praise you. Thank you, Father. Thank Praise you, Father. You. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Praise you, Father. Thank you, mm -hmm. Holy Spirit, that you draw on what's God's. You take of what belongs to Christ yes. and you show it to us. Yes, Lord. You reveal it to us. Mm -hmm. I like that you showed Jeremiah, Father. You said that his word, your word came to him and you asked him what he saw. Yes. The word came as a vision and the vision that he saw was the almond branch. Mm -hmm. The almond branch being the first um, tree to bloom in spring. Yes, Lord Jesus. Showing resurrection. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. When, when Jeremiah saw the resurrection of Christ, he saw the branch and you said you... you said to him, you've seen well. Yes. You've seen correct. Mm -hmm. I was watching over my word to see that it came to pass. Yes, said. perform it. Mm. Yeah, to, that it would come to pass, that he was seeing it come to Thank pass, you. that Thank Jeremiah you. was Thank seen you. correctly, Thank you. that it Thank was you. the resurrection of Christ. Yes, amen. <laughs> and that's Praise what, the Lord. Father, we're asking you for. Yes, God. The vision of the mm. resurrection of Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The vision of it. 
Mm. Father, we want more than a word, more than scripture. Yes. We want to divide the scripture mm -hmm. away from the word. We Hallelujah. want the word to be alive. And Amen. Good. Amen. Even though the book is written, we want the Christ. Amen. And so I'm asking Holy Spirit that you reveal the Christ. Amen. In the name of Jesus. He Bless is the, the revelation name. of this time. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let we Thank see you. Christ being revealed in every word that will be spoken. Mm -hmm. Let the Holy Spirit anoint each word and open up, remove the lid, mm -hmm. and give us the meat, the juice, the life, and the spirit mm -hmm. of every word. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Cross pointers, God bless you. People are watching us from India. God bless mm -hmm. you. From Nicaragua, God bless you. From Calgary, God bless you. Just okay. invite a friend. We, we really want to make this um, something for everybody. So. Uh, normally on Wednesday we have a Bible study at church. Hey, you know what? Church is spread everywhere nowadays. Just the way it should be. It's an expansion. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are here with from one man of the word. Clark, thank you for watching. <laughs> from Odawa, I guess. Blessing, 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 blessing. Thank you, Father. Remember each family again, oh God. Thank you because we have a safety and a guarantee in your word that nothing by no means will come close to our dwelling mm -hmm. because we dwell under the shadow of the Most High God. Thank you for the superior blood. Thank you for the blood that never run dry, the blood that never get tired, the blood that intercede, that speak, the blood that carry out the agenda of God, the blood that protect, that bring deliverance. We give you thanks. We give you thanks, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Kabo sheke brala bo shantaya ba. Keria koto bekele basia mahala mashi kere bosa. Fa ke ba kala mari ke tosto boki ya mahande le boste kaya. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Arise, 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 and shine. That's the word God is speaking to the church, to you and I. That's not a building. Arise and shine. Our light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name. Declare the word and the will of God. Let come in agreement with his word. Let draw the substance of that word. Let it become light today. Father, speak through your man servant. Ignite us. Give us understanding. Stir us up our heart, O oh God. Speak to our mind. Let it be realigned to the will of God. You say without the prophetic word, purpose is unknown. Let the word flow and bring us the clarity of the season in which we are. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord Jesus. He is a powerful God. And we are here to share his word. We are here to speak about Jesus. We are here to talk about the hope of the world. The Savior of the world, the Redeemer of the world. We thank you, Lord, for such a great salvation. Hallelujah. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. And to everybody that's watching, we bring you peace. Peace. The peace of God. Mm. The peace of Christ. Mm. The world has tribulation, but not us. Come on. We have peace because peace. we have Christ. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, my pastor. Ernest, God bless you. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Woo! He said, this is the peace I live with you. The peace that the world cannot give you. The peace that is not moved by circumstances. That is not dictated about the condition. It is the peace that Jesus Christ leads us. Peace be unto you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for watching us, Beatrice, from Dallas. God bless you. Share with some friends. Invite them on this platform. 45 minutes of pure Bible study, great wisdom that will be flowing from here that can lift up somebody's head. This is our midweek service, Cross Point Fellowship, Calgary, and we're sharing this with the whole wide world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Akabo rebo shanta la bayaba. Ori kote bake te rima la masike le bokatayaba. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. We bless your name.
Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Just begin to experience that peace we are feeling here. He is there with you. Amen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Peace comes by love. Yes. And it eliminates fear. Come on. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your love. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father God. In Jesus' name. Fear not, for I am with you. That's what he says. It is not just around us, it is in us. Thank you, Father. Praise you, God. Perfect love. That cast out all, not just mm -hmm. some fears, all, all. It doesn't excuse mm -hmm. it, it casts it out. Yes, <laughs> come on. If a robber was in your house, how would you cast him out? Mm -hmm. you, would, you would not be gentle. And so with fear or things of the devil, God cast out fear with the death and the resurrection of Christ. Amen. That's what's in you. Amen. And this love that he did this with is in your heart. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and let mm -hmm. it move through you. Let it overflow in you. Come on. You'll see the difference so with the flowing, experiencing power of God. Mm -hmm. Not just trying to obtain it, but let it obtain you. Come on. Let it overwhelm you. Mm -hmm. These blessings will come upon you and overwhelm you. Overtake you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let this overtake you. Yes. In Jesus' name. Ooh, let it overtake you. Let it take Praise. you like the floods. Mm -hmm. This is like the cascade of love, like mm -hmm. the Niagara Falls. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cascading Praise. upon you, mm -hmm. saturating you, overwhelming you. It subdue you, not to control you, <laughs> but to release you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Set Woo! you free mm -hmm. to be loved even in greater fashion. Yes, mm -hmm. come on. Thank you, fear Lord binds Jesus. you to be in greater fear. Mm. But love sets you free in freedom. Come on. <laughs> in all the freedom. <laughs> you can't obtain enough freedom with the love of God. Mm. It continues and continues and continues. The freedom to be able to turn the other cheek. Whoa. The freedom to turn it. The liberty. Liberty in Hebrew means to... Walk in the restraint of the Holy Spirit, which is no, there's no greater freedom than that. Come on. Jesus didn't say anything that the Father didn't say. He didn't do anything that the Father didn't do. Almost sounds restricting. Mm -hmm. But that was the greatest freedom because there's no bondage in the Holy Spirit. Come on now. And so here we are in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh, the freedom of God yes. that he's delivering to you. Yes. He has delivered to you. Mm -hmm. Not something that you're trying to obtain, but you yes. have obtained it. Come on. The love of God is shared abroad in your heart. So yes. fear is cast out. Yes. So just live that way. Amen. Receive that. Mm -hmm. Receive that. Receive that. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Mm -hmm. And it did cast that love upon our heart to give us assurance of our salvation. Mm -hmm. That we are safe in Him. Not just today. Eternally. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise yes, we just want to Praise take this time and uh, at 7 o'clock, just uh, say welcome to yes. those who are with us on this live uh, midweek Bible study with a great man of God. Uh, allowed me to introduce um, Minister uh, Kerry Mackey. Kerry Mackey, you know, you probably did not probably don't know but we met years ago many years I'm, I'm thinking back probably 1997 that's that's how far I came right because I arrived here in 1996 in Calgary mm -hmm. 1997 I think I met you at the full gospel church no. or <laughs> that that's going back I don't remember years, that years no. years I back. only remember from coming to your church yeah I, I do I they, we used to have a prayer meeting with uh, what's his name uh, Papa uh, Denzel Finn, yes, yeah, all right. Mm -hmm. That was gathering leaders from the city yes. and so on. Yes. I never, I, I never shared that with you, yeah, well, right? Yeah, I didn't so you, you remember to, to go there. You yeah. used to, of yeah. course. Yeah. <laughs> Hard for yeah. the city, <laughs> all right. So I, I remember I've seen you there. Yeah. Huh. In those days, of course, uh, I, I was just uh, a youngster, 
just serving in the house and loving to gather with people to learn from. But uh, it has been such a privilege to have you join our ministry in the past years. Just been tremendous. Mm -hmm. uh, for those who do not know, our minister, Kerry Mackey, is one of our great leaders at Cross Point Fellowship. This is a man of the word. I call him Rabbi. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not just a teacher, but one would teach you with understanding of season, like the son of Issachar. And I know you're in this for a treat. I just felt like, you know, uh, to give a new outlook to our Bible study for the mid-service mid that we usually have at Cross Point. Mm -hmm. But today we have that great exposure of people following us from different places. So, Minister Kerry, God bless you so much. We mm -hmm. appreciate you. We love you. I it's always you. awesome to be around you. Mm -hmm. You feel like, oh, you get a dose always of a great revelation. Mm -hmm. And we love your simplicity. We like your humility. So rich, but yet so simple. So, welcome. God bless you. Thanks for having yes, me. It's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And so, anyway, today is the day we want to talk about different things. We don't talk about redemption, but I would like just to start right away here um, by asking you, as a man of the wind, a man of the pneuma, mm -hmm. a man of the spirit, who have a prophetic insight, our viewers are watching. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we cannot feel like this is normal, right? Mm -hmm. We have to remove our head from the sand, not like the ostrich, to know, okay, something is happening. Yeah. So, in the confine of the calendar of God, what is happening now? Right. Please, if you can address our viewers. I know somebody will be blessed. I believe this is the thing that's going on with all churches. With not churches, but individuals as Christians. You know... I used to be afraid of an exam because of what I didn't know. And it would judge me on what I didn't know. But I've come to the place in Christ to know that an exam for me or a test for me is to bring me to the place that I see what's inside me that I can bring to him. Mm. I know my level by being tested. I know what's solid in me by, because of being tested. Mm -hmm. Because what is solid in me comes out of my mouth. What is solid in me comes out of my actions. Come on. So I can judge myself by the words of my mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Yes. And so I know what's in my heart by what I say. Mm -hmm. And I know by my actions what I actually believe. Mm -hmm. Because I promote those things that I believe in by doing the things that I'm acting on. Mm -hmm. And so faith being in the fact of... Trying to obtain something from Christ is not what I'm being tested on. What I'm being tested in this time and we're all being tested in is how will the word stand in you? Mm. How does the word stand in you? Of all the things that you said prior to the pandemic coming, are they what you're living today? Come on. You can judge yourself, not as a judgment, but a test. Come on. You can see in reality now where there's pressure where you really stood. And so now you can reach up to obtain from mm. God those things that you thought you had that you don't have, but they were the words of your mouth or a confession will say, but they weren't in your heart. And so now our hearts are revealed. And that's the most beautiful thing. Yes. Everything is exposed to God. It says in Hebrews chapter four, everything is naked and open before him. And I love this part. I used to be afraid to be naked and open. <laughs> Come on now. But now that I'm, I'm able and capable of having no shame, because Christ has removed my shame, that I can stand naked and exposed, that my heart is exposed to God. Who else would you want it exposed to? If God is love, why not be exposed to love? Yeah. Because the thing that he's going to help you with is the thing that you require not what you can be judged against, but to help you up above. That's so good. To remove. The reason why you go to a doctor if you have a, have a disease or a sickness or need an operation is the benefit of what happens after the operation. Come on, that's beautiful. <laughs> so now I can walk again because I had my knee operated on. You know what I'm saying? If there was an issue. So come now and be inspected. Hmm. Don't, don't, don't try to reach out past where you're at. 
Look at where you're at by your actions now, and then go to the Lord and say, look, this is how I've been. I would Come cry. On. Come on. His compassion for you is so wonderful. He's moving in this time to bring us to the reality of our own belief. Mm. But not just that, but to see that Jesus did not pass the boys in the boat when the in the storm. He walked on their storm. Mm -hmm. And then he, then he removed the fear of them in it. Lord, is this you? Yes, it is me. <laughs> and wow. they got to see who this Christ was. Mm -hmm. And when he calmed the storm, they said, yes, you are the Son of God. Amen. So the revelation of Christ in this time is what you need. What Amen. we need, what I need. Amen. And I'm looking for it in every fashion. Every single thing that I'm doing, I'm looking for the revelation of Christ. Amen. So, so beautiful. So in other words, we are in the place right now where uh, we're taking an inventory, uh, making ourselves naked before God. And, and we are comfortable in doing that because He will bring an upgrade unto us. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, uh, Minister Kerry, you know, when you put on the news there and there, there's different uh, voices, mm -hmm. even from the church, in the yeah. kingdom of God. Yeah. Uh, where we are hearing about the judgment of God, uh, this coronavirus, the judgment of God. Uh, as you know, you, you've been with me for a while, you understand my heart on seeing always things from the lenses of the finished work of Christ, right. who has paid the price. I would really like you to, to expand a little bit. Yeah. Uh, is it a judgment from God? Uh, what would we like to share to our viewers? In Isaiah 53, it says that the punishment for our peace was put upon Christ. Mm. And coming to understand judgment, judgment came in the Garden of Eden. When God said to Adam, he said, Adam, if you eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, in that day you shall surely die. Mm -hmm. And then he told Adam about the curses. But if you understand God, it wasn't God who cursed the earth. It was sin. And so sin had to be judged. So when Christ took our judgment in order to bring us into peace, if you understand if you were being judged now, then God didn't do it properly in Christ. Come on. But because God did it properly in Christ, you have peace. And this peace that God has for you has already come upon you. And so you are not being judged because Christ was judged already for you. Amen. But the testing is what we mm -hmm. were talking about mm -hmm. is not again about a judgment, but a, to bring us into the reality of who this God is. That's <laughs> so good. So you're being brought into a place that's not judging you. It's bringing you into a divine place, growing. One Praise the Lord. Glory to glory. Praise <laughs> the Lord. Thank you for sharing that heart. It just... It's amazing because you know people need to understand the reality of what Jesus Christ has done for us mm. on the cross. Absolutely. Um, you know, another question I would like to ask you, of course, you know, many people are afraid, scared uh, because of tomorrow, losing jobs, a lot of stress in the home because children are at home. People don't know how to manage things, administrate things. There is a sense of not knowing. And we do understand sometimes that fear accumulates a lot when you don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. And so it just amplify all those stuff. What can we say to our viewers, believers, and even those who are not Christian, who are watching us, uh, a word of hope uh, of how to deal with this fear, what's going mm -hmm. on, what needs to be done so they can enter that place of peace and, and deal with that anxiety that a lot of people are going through. Mm -hmm. I, I was at a place, um, a couple of weeks ago, a lady came in and she was shaking, scared about what's happening. Hmm. And she couldn't ha get milk. In Calgary, we were low on milk. And, and she was scared, nervous. Her body was shaking. And she came into a pharmacy where I was at and, and she was just having a hor horrible time. And I was introduced to her and I got to pray with her. And I could see that her prayer 
it, she was having such a struggle with the fear and with all of the things that the media was saying and not only the fact that what the me media was saying but the truth of what the media was saying mm -hmm. because there was no milk <laughs> there was no supply of stuff and so the word that she heard was coming to pass in her own sight and she believed it to the place that she was nervous and having a hard time so when she said she wouldn't have didn't couldn't get milk for her children I said you know I have a jug of milk at home can I go get it for you <laughs> let's have the simple list of uh -huh. this being taken away mm -hmm. so that now your fear is subsided by somebody who has something so I want the church and us to be the place that we are an essential service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if we become an essential service to those who don't believe and to those who do believe but they are not at the same place as us call on us yes call on us we're here for you mm -hmm. and if you have a fear that's okay come to somebody who knows how to take away the fear like my pastor here has talked about many times what about the fireman <laughs> He yeah. runs into the fire. Yeah. I know a guy right here, he knows how to run into a fire. So if you're having a fire at home, call him. <laughs> he knows how to fix your fire. <laughs> and Jesus is the one who fixed the fire Amen. for us all. And so the manifestation of the word of God in us will eliminate that fear. Amen. The manifestation of the word of God in us. Mm -hmm. That love. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about that. That flow of love that cast out all fear. All fear. We'll, we'll never know the love of God until you see Christ on the cross. Mm, mm. If you want to know, I have this little saying that I say to people, you know, the empty cross is far greater than the full cross. Come on. <laughs> because Christ was resurrected. And so to live in the resurrection of Christ, the baptism of his resurrection defeated what was in his death. Amen. And so we can come to live in this power of his resurrection and so the manifestation of God working through us comes from here we go with Jesus you know <clears throat> Paul and Peter talked about the milk of the word yes and the milk of the word was for babies and a lady came to Jesus and she required her daughter to be um, a demon to be leave, leaving her daughter and she said to him but the children eat the crumbs that mm -hmm. fall off the mm -hmm. off of the table. The dogs even eat the crumbs that fall off the table. And he said, but the bread is for the children. Yes. So he elevated his talk from milk to bread. Huh. Bread was something that we were able to give. Yes. <laughs> but Jesus sitting at the well with the lady, before the lady came from town with the, to get water from the well, the disciples said to Jesus, hey, we're going to go into town and buy bread, and would you like some? And he said, no, but my meat is to, to do, do the will, will of God. the Father. And so if I have meat in me, it's the manifestation of Christ coming to you. Amen. Because the meat that he gave to this woman changed Come the on. town. <laughs> Come on. And it was because he drew out of the well of the Spirit. Whew. And here we are, we have this ability, because Jesus Christ said this himself, these things that I do, you will also do. Yes. So you can tell where you walk in the manifestation of Christ in you, mm -hmm. the hope of glory for yes. someone. Yes. Amen. That is so amazing. So, you know, I think this time as uh, the men of God was saying, let just all that we have received within all these years, mm -hmm. let give room to it to manifest out mm -hmm. and bring us in that place of safety. I like this scripture so much. You know, those who put their trust in the Lord, they are stable like Mount Zion. Hmm. As the Lord, as the mountains surround Jerusalem, the Lord surround his people. Mm -hmm. We are a sure word. Numbers 23, 19, God is not a man that he shall lie. And so let keep on trusting this word. It was a reason why many of you watching, You've been to Sunday school, you grew up in the church, you read the Bible, you've been to Bible study, you've been to book studies, you give your tithe and your offering, you're a part of the prayer team, you've done all that you could to sit down under good teaching, uh, inform yourself, cultivate yourself. These are the moments where we need to make room for that, all that riches that we have embedded within and cherish to just now manifest. So fear not, for I'm with you, Absolutely. says the Lord. You know, 
uh, I, I like we touch this subject on uh, the Ministry of Reconciliation. Mm -hmm. that, that, that really uh, the finished work of Christ. Because we talk about foundation, but these, even though we will call them doct doct uh, foundational doctrine, but these are the thing that keep us where we are today. Mm -hmm. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Yeah. You know, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Behold, all things are passed away. Yeah. So I, I'd like we talk about this a little bit, uh, mm -hmm. you know. I'm just going to put this down because I'm probably not going to need it. <laughs> but if I we're just flowing, all right? <laughs> this is our first day. We, we just want to flow by the Holy Ghost here and, and uh, take notes and, 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 and open up your heart and let listen a little bit about the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creation. What all these things mean, right? It's important that we learn a little bit about it. Please go ahead. We can tell our depth of... Our, our own single depth in Christ. According to this, I love this scripture. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, and behold, all things are made new, and all things are of God. Paul talked in Romans, you know, he said, Oh, wretched man that I am, mm -hmm. who would deliver me from this crazy life, living both halfway in the yes. flesh and halfway in the spirit? Mm. And that's the greatest struggle a Christian can have. And so if we're living in that way, I recognize in my own self that if I am a new creature, Come on. then old things are passed away. Mm. So now I won't struggle with those old things any longer. Because now that I understand Isaiah 53, say I used to struggle with sin. I, I used to struggle with sin. Sin would come to me from my forefathers and Come my on. own sin. Come on. And I would fight and I would fight. And I would pray out, God, you got to help me. God, We've you been got to there. help me. God, I've been you got to help me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then the next thing you know what I was doing? Oh, no, God. Oh, no, God. And then yeah. I was going, oh, sorry, God. Oh, sorry, God. Because yeah. I'd fall into it again. Yeah. Guilt. Guilt and all of that. And God came to me. The Holy Spirit came to me. Now, I'm going to tell you 14 years ago. Come on. And he said to me, Carrie, I want you to understand that Christ was wounded for your transgressions. Mm -hmm. He was bruised for your iniquities. So he told me to let go of looking at my sin and to turn to his wounds and his bruises. Mm. And when I turned to his wounds and bruises, I was now surrendering yes. to something different other than my sin <laughs> and my transgression. And those wounds and bruises have overtaken me in and brought me into this freedom. That's so powerful. I walk in this freedom that those things, they can't even come to punch me anymore. They don't come to my house and knock on my door. Yes. Because of the fact that I've come to the place after lots of battle mm -hmm. in the mind. The helmet of my salvation is on not in prayer. It's on constantly. This scripture that says, um, you know, that uh, from Peter, it says that uh, if we're just drinking the milk of the word, we still don't have the um an understanding of our righteousness in yes. god and it says that in the hebrew parts of it it says that you are like a warrior without armor mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. and when you can understand the wounds and and bruises of christ and that they did your battle for you now you can rest in what christ Come on, did the for wounds you. of christ have done the <laughs> battle for you so you can rest in Christ. That is very profound. Mm. The wounds of Christ have won the battle for you. That's right. So you can rest in Christ. Right. So in all of those forms from Isaiah 53, starting in every single part of it, <clears throat> Jesus was rejected for you. <laughs> uh -huh. Because he was rejected from you, now there's no rejection for you. Come on now. And so I've had people say, oh, I don't feel accepted. Mm. But my Bible says you are accepted among the beloved. Yes. So if I believe in the redemptive power of Christ, Shut I am up, no Shut longer up. unacceptable. Come on now, Google. Google. I am only accepted. Uh -huh. And so I live in this exception so mm -hmm. that when rejection tries to come for me and that I'm not accepted to people, I say, who do you think you are? Come on. Do you think you can stand against Christ? Mm. He's the one who raised from the dead. This is profound. And because he raised from the dead, I am in him. And he is in me. Therefore, 
what used to try to get at me cannot because he left it in the grave. I've raised with him. That's so awesome. This is so beautiful. The scars, the wounds of Jesus Christ has won the battle for us. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm reminded of Paul speaking to the Corinthian church. He said, awake to righteousness mm -hmm. and sin no more. Right. <laughs> uh, you know, sin consciousness keep us in bondage. Right. But when we begin to be conscious of the righteousness of Christ in us, that finished work of the cross, the finished work of the scars mm -hmm. have secured for us and captured to us that victory. Yeah. We, we don't focus anymore on the sin, mm -hmm. but we focus more Absolutely. on the righteousness of Christ. Awake to righteousness and sin no more. Because uh, you, we get beaten, you know, you know, sin, 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 sin. Guess what? Whatever you hear, that's what you will become and that's what you will do. So we need to live now our lives, as the man of God was saying, with an understanding that Christ did die on the cross mm -hmm. and his scars have purchased for us that liberty. Yeah. It is a reality. We have to consciously accept it as well and just surrender to Holy Spirit because sins in the first place is too strong for man. Mm -hmm. Christ has to come and do for man what man couldn't do for himself. That's right. Please keep on yeah. again. I, we, we can, we'll never yeah. get tired to talk about this because, right. listen, a lot of people are in bondage today, mm -hmm. not even because of the demons. No. no. Right? Because of wrong believing. Absolutely. So we live in an era of the New Testament, uh, but sometimes our believing system is like an Old Testament. So we can no longer live our life as if Christ's death on the cross did not make a difference. Yeah. So let's let talk a little bit yeah. some more about that. Please. So uh, if we're going to take this fact, you know, uh, um, I like this little poem and I can't remember the name of the person who wrote it, but it says a lot. It says, Satan wants to define you by your scars, mm -hmm. but Jesus wants you def to define you by his. So Satan wants to <laughs> define you by your scars, but Jesus wants to define you by his scars. That's right. Wow. And so the things that ailed me are my scars. Mm. And if I wear them like a crown, it's Woo. only thorns. <laughs> but Jesus shaka, babo, shaka. came and brought me in by his scars uh -huh. into the righteousness of God. Come on. Because it says in Hebrews that it says, we enter in through the veil that is to say his flesh. Mm. I want to tell you something that Jesus Christ being the door is only the entrance. You should come on in and see what's in the table. <laughs> come on now. Because what's at the table is the meat of God that you get to understand the salvation that you came through. Coming into Christ washes away, cleans all of our, all of our scars away. Yes. So that we can take his. But I really think that, you know, like Daniel, when he came out of the lion's den, mm -hmm. I like that the kings looked and he, he examined Daniel and there wasn't a mark on Daniel. None. I want to tell you that I think that when we go to see Christ, that he's not going to have a mark on him. Come on. We're, we're the ones who absorb those scars. <laughs> yeah. We've, re we've received what he's did, done. And they're the things that work through us to be, bring the reconciliation to others. We were talking earlier about the ministry of reconciliation. Yes. I cannot give what I don't have. Mm -hmm. And in, the, in 2 Corinthians 5, it says that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. And now he's given us this ministry as if it were that God was now in us. Doing the same reconcile. thing as he yes. did with Christ. Yes. But if I don't understand the ministry of reconciliation, I can't bring you to the peace that I have. Come on. <laughs> Come on. And so coming to understand... There's this guy, Isaiah, and if you go to Isaiah chapter 6, and you look at Isaiah, and he was caught up into the Holy of Holies, mm -hmm. and he saw the Lord of hosts. I believe that he saw Jesus ministering with his own blood. I believe that he saw Jesus in the fashion of what it looked like for him to be have come <sighs> from hell with the blood his own blood and ministering in the temple Come for on. my sake. Shaka, boy, boy, and he shaka. saw the glory of God that in John, I want to say this, John 12, verse 41, Jesus quoted this and he said, um, he said, 
uh, Isaiah saw my glory mm -hmm. and he spoke of it. Yes, <laughs> yes. So we know that Isaiah truly did see Jesus in the Holy of Holies. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then he went on into Isaiah 53 and he said, who has believed this report? Yes. And we were talking earlier about the word believe. I have it, we'd have to have a class really to, to be able to say it with a blackboard because I've taken the Hebrew letters for the word believe. Come and on. I've looked at each letter and examined each letter. And I love doing this because I've done it with the Ministry of Reconciliation and lots of other words in the Bible. But through the Hebrew and taking them as each letter to bring and to be able to form the word. Mm -hmm. And when the letter is given to you, it is so amazing what is actually happening in that Please verse. share with us. We can't, they can't wait. We can't yeah. wait to hear that. I can't wait to hear that. So believe. Believe. The word believe, I have it down here, but the word. Please, please feel free. We, we want to we wanna get the meat. Yes, share with us. I hope you're being blessed at home. This is so awesome. I'm, I'm feeling just so re refreshed sitting here in his presence. I'd have to show you on here if you'd be <laughs> able to see it anyway. I have the Hebrew letters, you see, Yes. here. So I put them down in order. And the first letter is, um, oh, I wonder why I didn't write the name of them, but I know this one is anyway, Lamed. It's the tallest letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Mm -hmm. Not only is it the tallest, but it's the middle letter. <laughs> okay, the tallest and the middle. Yes, and so all letters come to it, and all letters come out of it. <laughs> wow. And it's the tallest letter above all letters. Ooh, so it's talking about the wisdom that. from above. Uh huh. And it, it has a line, and then it comes down like a Z almost. And it's the wisdom that comes from God down to man. Whew. And so... Thank you, Lord. It's the Lord is one mm -hmm. who builds and expands, and it's male and female to be made one. So it's the knowledge of God coming into the knowledge of God. This is only the first letter of belief. <laughs> it says that... That's the first letter of, of belief, the word belief. How many letters do we have in the word belief? Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Five. Five letters in the word mm -hmm. believe. We are starting with the first one. Please okay. say it, uh, repeat again that. It is the tallest, but it's in the middle. It's the tallest. Everything comes from it. So everything out. comes into it and out of it. Yes. And it's the wisdom from above. That's come from above to man. From God to man. Yes. And so the wisdom that came from God to man caused us all to be one. Mm. <laughs> Woo. Shaka and so that's in Christ. And so the second letter mm. is empowered to go. To be fruitful by the word and mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit. Fruitful by the word and, and the, Holy the Holy Ghost. Spirit. That's important. Yes. Very much. Mm -hmm. Because again, it's showing you the emphasis of God as one. <laughs> Amen. So it, without the word, you have no wisdom. Without the Holy Spirit, you don't know how to use that wisdom. And if it didn't come from God, what use is it? <laughs> That's right. Come on. So mm -hmm. we come to the next letter. And it's the first letter of the alphabet. And it means the beginning oneness with no division. The oneness. Leader, oneness is God. Oneness. Yeah. No division. No double-mindedness, oneness. oneness. Complete in that oneness. <laughs> let, 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 let's start again. You know, I, I like sometimes to repeat things. Mm -hmm. So uh, the, the, the word believe, Hebrews, five letters. The first letter, the tallest and in the middle. From that letter, everything comes and everything leaves. It is the wisdom of God coming down from above to man that is under the second letter is talking about fruitfulness mm -hmm. and the power and the power to be fruitful, to be fruitful. So you receive an anointing, a grace, a power to produce, to be fruitful, to multiply, to replenish and to subdue. We're going back to Genesis here again with That's that right. word. That's right. And the third letter was talking about the unity, oneness of God, undivided, mm -hmm. no double mindedness. Yeah, please mm -hmm. continue. And so. Then the 13th letter mm -hmm. is the next one, which means beginning. Beginning. So all of it has to do 
with God from the beginning, mm -hmm. giving all of us to come to a beginning in ourselves. Ooh, shaka balaba. <laughs> God in the beginning, him. giving us an opportunity to have our own genesis, mm -hmm. ourself. This is the thought of a man as a new creature. <laughs> a man as a new living creature. Wow, powerful. So it's not just bread alone, but it's revelation. Mm. It's tangible. It's um, the three-corded strength that can't be broken. Amen. And so what God brought to us in Christ, because God sent his son to save us, mm -hmm. and we are drawn by the Holy Spirit to the Father, Amen. which is God's wisdom. There's the three-braided cord that we're tied to in this new beginning Cannot of us be broken. as a creation. Yes, as a new creation. So your new creation is secure, is safe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Mm -hmm. All right? It's safe. So when we talk <laughs> about the rapture, people should not scare you of the rapture. You should actually be thrilled <laughs> that you're being raptured to go yeah. see the one who have loved you when you were still a sinner. Now you're a new creation, a holy nation, a new breed. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. And the very last letter is the sixth letter of the Hebrew alphabet and it means sacrifice mm. Ooh, so now we've Rabbi come Shaka. right from the beginning of God mm -hmm. to the place that he comes into you by sacrifice so the ministry of reconciliation is not something that a man did but something that God did for man Ooh. to bring him into this oneness amen say that creation. again please that's a, <laughs> that the summary the ministry of reconciliation is not something that men did but something that God did to bring man into oneness with into him. Oneness with him. Mm -hmm. Christ in you, the hope of glory. I am in you as I am in the Father. I am in you and I'm in the Father. So we are in Christ and Christ is in the Father. So we are in the Father as well. Absolutely. <laughs> oneness, the mm -hmm. ministry of oneness with Christ. Mm -hmm. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. I, I love these five uh, letters that form the word believe in Hebrew. That's just so deep and profound. Mm -hmm. It all begin with them. Yeah. And just ends with them. and end with them to bring us into oneness with him. That's right. So when I believe in the right measure, really what the word believe mean, mm -hmm. is that oneness of God. That's right. I come in agreement with God and I come in agreement with what God says. Right. And you can't come in that oneness unless you were righteous. Unless so if you were made righteous. Right. So that <laughs> sacrifice now bring us into Christ, make us righteous right. by his sacrifice. That's right. Ooh, and, and sacrifice and offering mm. sounds so contradictory. I'm going to offer a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Come on. I bet you that not one of those lambs of the Old Testament ever chose to want to be a sacrifice. That's right. Come on. <laughs> but... The words, if they could, they run away. That's right. Because if they could see what they were going to do, but Christ saw what he was going to do. Yes. He knew beforehand what was coming up. He even said to his disciples, I'm going to tell you what's coming up. Come on now. And Ooh, so... I feel it. I feel goosebumps. Sacrifice. <laughs> <laughs> so the word sacrifice and offering in Hebrew are one word, which means korban. And korban means to bring into oneness. Ooh. And so the sacrifice of the offering was to bring you into oneness so that you would believe. I have a little class that I was teaching on Sunday nights and we were talking. I said, you know, in the Old Testament, the mm -hmm. Old Testament tabernacle yes. is a picture of the sacrifice of Christ. Yes. But you and I as a church are the picture or the revelation of the resurrection of Christ. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Because what that sacrifice did now revealed in us is the hope of glory that they were looking for out of their thing. So when there was a sacrifice, and I will say that I sinned against you. Yes. And I had to bring a sacrifice to the priest in order to um, make right between peace. you and I, and peace between us. In that sacrifice that I would have to make, I was the one who had to cut the throat of I'll the animal mm -hmm. and watch it bleed. Because if I watch the life flow out of that animal, how now will I feel about sinning against you? Ooh. And so once the sacrifice was made and the smoke was coming up off the altar, mm -hmm. there was nobody in that camp 
that could say Carrie still has a sin against him, against Elijah. Because it was finished. They saw the smoke going yes. up and they could smell the sweet savor yes. going to God. Woo. And when it went to God, no one could challenge that smoke. No one so could that challenge. Could, no. I couldn't even challenge it myself because now God had taken it. Because the sin was pronounced on the sacrifice. Come on now. And so now for me to understand the sacrifice of Christ. I'm going to cry again. That's okay. That's the Holy Ghost is here. Yeah. You know that it is the spirit of compassion. <laughs> yeah. The love of Christ. To understand the love that he understood what he was going to do. And now here we are with the word believe, and it's the first part of what Isaiah talked about in Isaiah 53. It says, who has believed our, our report? report? Who has allowed this report to come Ooh. upon them and overtake them, transform them into what this report is? That's right. And this report is, I died for you. Yes. So now you can live in for me. me. Mm. So that whatever ailed you, my wounds took care of. Come on now. Whatever was the issue that you were rejected, I was rejected. Woo, so I took up, this. I took your sickness, check out the stripes. Mm -hmm. And all of the things that it went through. Now you could go through your Bible and say that in Deuteronomy, and I don't remember exactly what the verse is, but it says that if a guilty man is requiring stripes, to be punished with stripes, let him be striped before the judge. Yes. Let him be put on the ground and straight before the judge. I love that scripture because of the fact that it says a guilty man. Christ took my place as my guilt. That's right. He took it so strong that even in the presence of the judge, the judge did not say, no, no, it has to be George over here. Yes. <laughs> he said he let it be me. And so when it was, when the man was striped in front of the judge and he walked away after, there wasn't a person that could defy what the judge had already agreed to. Come on now. And that's how God sees you and I. Amen. So there's no judgment. Amen. There's no judgment to you. There's no fear to you. Because Jesus Christ was the one who was sacrificed for us willingly to bring us into the place of freedom in Christ. So that now that I know and understand to the point that I do, the ministry of reconciliation I can bring to you. That's right. And bring this reconciliation. This is so powerful. I mean, seriously, I really, I know you've been blessed. If the blood of an animal in the old covenant could even bring satisfaction, mm. right, for one year because of the life of the animal being taken, you become substituted, the animal being punished on your behalf, the burn offering that that sacrifice that bring sweet perfume in the nostril of God to release you from your guilt. How much more? Not in the shadow, but in the light, the real substance, Jesus Christ himself. And he said something so profound. Nobody could contra-attack that. Nobody could come and say, no, now you still have done something. No, nobody could say that. You have an accuser. He is called the accuser of the brethren, Satan himself, from Revelation, who accuses the brethren night and day. Just this word you just received have canceled all his accusations yes, and the summation put them zero, nil. Mm -hmm. That's why Roman 8 said, therefore, there is no condemnation for you and I who are in Christ. The sacrifice was made. We must believe it according to what the men of God just shared. God coming down with wisdom. It began with him. This plan of salvation was his deal. Was not man's idea. What man couldn't do for himself. He did it for man. Even the best among us could not have satisfied the demand of God. Yeah. And the worst among us qualify as we believe we receive the righteousness of Christ. You know what? When God look at you right now, he doesn't see Elijah. He sees Jesus. Yes. That's what it is. So just enter that realm of peace and, and just accept that God did it for you. Begin to jubilate. The Spirit of God is bringing joy in somebody's heart right now as we're speaking because you've been under guilt. Religion had tied you up. And, and your own self-righteousness also 
have tied you up really hard. You beat up yourself so much. You're not able to overcome, to get out of the grip of that addiction, of that sin, of that behavior that you just want to wake up in the morning and it's gone. Paul's been there. He's been there. We've been there. And we still stand under the fountain of the blood that does not run dry. Refreshing us. Reminding us. Just believe. Mm -hmm. Just believe. A sacrifice is sufficient to reconcile you and I to him. Making us one with him. Mm -hmm. As you just explained it. We are going really closing. Uh, uh, get closing. Close to our closing. <laughs> we, we just want to be a good steward with the time God gave us. But I want to let you know, next Wednesday, please, at the same time, 7 p.m. Uh, Mountain Time, that's Calgary Time, 9 p.m. in the East, we will be here with the men of God again. This was just an introduction, warm up. This is a trial. And, and uh, we would like to hear from you, you know, uh, did you enjoy it? Did you receive something? But as I was saying, many people have been free from guilt. Mm -hmm. Many people have been free from condemnation. Many people are receiving freedom coming upon them. Their mind is become clear because there's the power in the word mm -hmm. to set you free. Hallelujah. One last closing word, uh, Minister Maki, uh, to our audience and the people who are watching us. What do you feel in your heart to minister to them for one last word, please. I want to tell you, first of all, that I love you. Yes. I, I really do. I want to tell you, secondly, that yes, you are free. And I want to tell you this, and I know people will jump, but you have to hear my whole part. <laughs> please, go ahead. It. There's no place in the Bible at all that it says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Mm -hmm. Come on now, listen what White is going to say. It's important. You can't find that anywhere in the Bible. And I know that a whole bunch of people will... Speak up right now and say, oh, yes, there is a scripture that says that. Mm -hmm. But this scripture says, submit, submit to, to God, God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So when I was talking to you about the sin that I couldn't handle, I was submitting to it all the time, and it overtook me. But the Ooh, moment that I learned how to submit to the wounds and the bruises, to submit Ooh. to Christ, the enemy had to flee from me. Because I was submitted to a greater power. I was submitted to the actual word of God. Mm. I was submitted to the wounds. I wasn't just submitted to the wounds. I was submitted to the man who performed the wounds in his own flesh. Amen. And understanding the love that drove him to do it was for my sake. Praise How God. can it not work? Mm. So I want to tell you that you're free. Amen. I want you to Amen. turn from the thing that ails you, no yes. matter what it is. Woo. You're not condemned. Imagine Paul also saying this thing. Paul said, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ. Mm -hmm. But you know, somebody might have been sitting in the crowd while he said that in yes. the church, that he had murdered their brother. He might have, <laughs> he might have, he might have had the other one in jail. Come on now. They might have looked at him and said, what do you mean there's no condemnation? Yes. Do you want to know what I'm saying? And Paul stood up there and said, no, I'm in Christ. I know that there's no condemnation. Come on now. So he was the living proof of mm. the resurrection of yes. Christ. And that's who you and Ooh. I are as the church. We Ooh. are the living proof. Ooh. Let this be in you. Yes. I want to tell you this. Believe this report. Believe this report. It is a good report that Christ has died for you. He became sin that you might be the righteousness of God. God. That is the report to believe. Yes. Believe that report and no guilt will find room in your mind. Mm -hmm. No condemnation will find room in your life. No accusation will find room in your life. Just believe the report that mm -hmm. Jesus died for you. His finished work is sufficient. Mm -hmm. Your righteousness Absolutely. is in him and Absolutely. you have become that righteousness. Mm -hmm. May the Lord Thank bless you. you. Please, Absolutely. you know, share this video with other people. We'll be here Wednesday again. Uh, Minister Mikey, thank you for thank such you. a depth of the word. I'm so excited. This is introduction and we are already feeling the vibes. The meat is rich and we are honored to have such a great leaders in our home and uh, a voice that need to be heard more often by many other people. And we're going to surely use this platform 
to allow him to flow freely and bring the wealth of wisdom and experience and the glory of God and, uh, and so on. So let me just pray for you as we're just closing right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pray Father, we just give you thanks for this word that you have sent through the airways. We know there's no distance in the spirit. You've touched men and women, uplift their spirit, encourage them. You set them free. You are breaking the yoke and the chains of religion. You have lifted them up above condemnation. And surely you have made them believe again. Thank you, Father God, for the richness of the word. Bless your minister who have come freely to share with us on this platform. God, we give you thanks and we're looking forward again to see you, brother and sisters. Mm -hmm. Share the good news and believe this report. We love, we love you. Bye now. <laughs>